Well, welcome to Women Veterans Alliance webinar. I am Melissa Washington. I am the CEO and founder of Women Veterans Alliance. I'm a Navy veteran. And our purpose is to connect women veterans, you, with each other and resources. And ways we do that is through our online and in-person networking and events. And our webinars are one of the ways that we connect uh, you with resources and we bring on some great speakers. If you haven't heard, or hopefully you have, a Women Veterans Magazine, we have launched, uh, California has already been launched. Uh, we are working uh, right now on Oregon and Colorado. Uh, we are looking for articles, advertisers, authors, artists. So if you had called Oregon or Colorado home at one time or currently or stationed there, um, the deadline to get that in for the 2023 um, publication is on December 15th. And you can go to womenveteransmagazine.com. Um, this is a mock cover, as you'll see. These are photos from our California issue. And also, too, with that, Submit your photo, womenveteransmagazine.com to get your photo on the cover of Oregon or Colorado. The um, Texas, Florida um, DMV one, we are working on that one. This is the photos cover. These are actually, there's a woman that, these are the women that submitted their photos uh, for these specific covers. And these will be the um, covers, except for the verbiage, of course, will change. Um, but so if you did happen to submit your photo uh, for these states, it should be on the cover there. And also too, with the publication, it is a yearly publication that's available in digital and print. And so you're, again, if you're interested in subscribing or purchase a one-time issue, you can do so at womenveteransmagazine.com. Also, if you're not connected with us, we are on social media platforms from Facebook to Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, LinkedIn, and of course, YouTube. So feel free to like with us, connect with us. If you're not a Women Veterans Alliance paid member, um, there are perks of being a member. Uh, we are still continuing the membership promo. Uh, you will need to email me if you're interested and we can get that information um, out to you and, and get you all set up um, to become a paid Women Veterans Alliance member. I, I did want to share this uh, information, even though it says interviews by June 30th, the goal. If you are not familiar with the Library of Congress and the Veterans History Project, uh, they are working and continuing to work on to collect and preserve the personal accounts of veterans. And of course, um, there is not there, there should be more women veterans that submit for that. Um, so again, if you're interested, uh, you can go to the LOC.gov Library of Congress to look for the Veterans History um, Project um, and, and get your information. It, it takes some time um, to get all that information, the forms you have to complete. There are people that can do your interview. Um, and this information was from last week. I was just in Washington, D.C. at the Library of Congress for the Uniting Us event. Um, and they honored uh, these four women as well as other women uh, that were um, killed in Iraq and Afghanistan. So our upcoming webinars, we will have more, but these are our two upcoming ones. We have a very popular one tomorrow um, at 1 o'clock Pacific, 4, 4 p.m. Eastern. And that is Harnessing the Power of Your Voice Through Podcasting. So if you've had any interest in maybe being a podcaster, just wanna know more about podcasting, please definitely join our webinar tomorrow. Um, you can visit our website, click on webinars and you can register. And then next month um, we have Rita Henry who's gonna be doing, um, she's an intuitive guide and healer. Um, she's gonna be doing relationships when people aren't who you want them to be. It's gonna be a great, another great webinar to join us. Um, also too, we have our new annual event that we have as Women Veterans Engage, September 9th and 10th. Uh, look for your the email this week for the registration for that. It will be an in-person and um, online event. So if you aren't in one of these locations and you're interested in joining us, you can do so. It is um, a two-day event, September 9th and 10th. I highly recommend this event. This will be an annual event in addition to our annual um, unconference. And for those that are interested, the unconference will take place September next year, 2023, uh, at the Tropicana Las Vegas. And if you're in the greater Sacramento area, uh, later this month, we are partnering on a, um, a Jitsu self-defense event, and that's taking place the end of uh, this month, July. So without further ado, I would love to introduce our speaker, Bridget Renee. Navy disabled veteran, go Navy. 
recipient of an MBA and three-time best-selling author and community organizer residing in Riverdale, Georgia. She is also the CEO founder of Legacy Bridge Inc., which is a minority, woman, and disabled veteran-owned business. Her vision is to coach as many veterans as possible, the art of working smarter to build life skills that transition into thriving entrepreneurial entities. So without further ado, Bridget, it's all yours. Thank you, thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Well, depending on where you're at, but good afternoon. It is after three year on the um, East Coast. I'm out here in Atlanta, Georgia. And I am just super excited to be here with all of you guys. And I believe I will be sharing my screen. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'll go ahead and get started. And I believe she already introduced me uh, pretty well, but um, that is it. My background, I have a Bachelor of Science in Technical Communication and a Master of Business Administration. And I recently received a grant to study at Cornell University. And uh, that is one of the things that I would like to also let you know is that there are so many grants out there. You know, you have companies, um, large corporations, like I think this one was through Bank of America, but you go to like a lot of these Fortune 500 websites and there you see them listed. It's like, you know, we have grants available and sometimes it's for women to study, to start their own business or things of that nature. So I took advantage of the uh, Cornell University certification in women's entrepreneurship. And I, uh, that was like a three, a three month course. And um, it was just awesome because it wasn't like online learning as far as, you know, you go at your own pace. We have actually professors from Cornell universities who took part in it. So that was a great, great opportunity for myself. And I would like to just let you guys know that there are so many grants that are out there available for you as well. And as president and CEO of Legacy Bridge Incorporated, I am a speaker, a best-selling author and veteran, Navy veteran, of course. And my vision is like, you know, I want to be like the underground railroad for the cubicle slave. And we don't like to hear the word slave, but what I mean when I say cubicle slave, it is like that person who is, underserved at their job. You know, you go to a nine to five and you wanna be happy. You wanna be happy in life and whatever it is that you're doing, but sometimes that's just not the case. And you just consider yourself, you know, you feel like you're a slave to your job, a slave to, you know, everything that's going on around you. And one of the things that I like to do is to just spread the knowledge about how you can get away from that and just create your own destiny, your own legacy. And that is why I named my company Legacy Bridge. So what I started doing was redesigning my lunch hour at my you know, traditional nine to five. And it really did change the trajectory of my life. And that is my vision for you. Instead of you know, being at lunch, spending that lunch hour, well, we all like a little gossip every once in a while, but you know, sometimes it's, it's a time waster and I specialize in time management. So I focus on like the time wasters and the things are just unhealthy for you like eating unhealthy foods, things of that nature, drinking unhealthy, you know, drinks during your lunch break. I like to take my lunch break and just spend it on doing something that's just going to really take me to the next level, the level where, you know, I envision myself to be. And I would say I'm not there yet, but, you know, you just keep every day, you know, something new happens every day and that you are just shooting for that, that goal. And it is just, it's so possible. And you see people doing that every day so it is not impossible it's not impossible for you to live the life of your dreams it's not impossible for you to be happy so let's um let's just start with talking about your vision and what has been placed in your heart and it's not just about finances it's also about your spirituality physically and emotionally because we want to be that person that you know exercises in self-care and that has nothing to do with just finances. There are a lot of things that go um, with that. Spiritually, you know, you may be, is, there's just something missing. A lot of things, you know, are missing in your life and you're wondering where to turn to. Physically, so many people have that goal of losing weight, but it's not always about losing weight. Sometimes physically, 
your goal is to accept yourself. You know, so many people who look overweight, they're happy, but they don't know how to be happy because people look at them and they think of them as being overweight. Sometimes the physical is about you accepting what you already have, what your looks, you know, what you look like, not just in the mirror, when you're looking in the mirror, but when people are looking at you as well, and emotionally, definitely emotionally, you know, what has been placed in your heart? There are some things that you want to be able to feel. You want to feel love. You know, you want to feel appreciated. And sometimes we don't know how to get to that point. So what has been placed in your heart and how are you honoring that vision? A lot of times, well, I've done a vision board and I, you know, teach people, I teach like a lot of the um, teenagers that I work with how to do vision boards and they just absolutely love it. And I also do daily confirmations for myself. It was interesting. I have um, what I did on my phone. It's like I organized all of my apps to, you know, to just recognize my daily confirmations. You know, I have all of the financial apps and under I am bankable. You know, I have all of my social media apps under I am friendly. I have all of the, like the exercise recipe apps under I am healthy. So those daily confirmations are something that you can see every day. You can talk to yourself to about every day. So it's about honoring your vision. The five, seven, nine breathing exercise. That's something I did actually before I came on this presentation because what it does, it's a calming exercise. And a lot of doctors, they recommend it before, say like before a job interview, you know, before um, like a date, you know, before bedtime, especially because it calms you and it puts you in a place of just being relaxed and just ready to take on whatever task it is. And what it is, is you inhale for five seconds, you hold it for seven seconds and you release it for nine seconds. And you do that three times, it has not only effect on your mind, but on your body as well. So you have to understand, how are you honoring your vision? It's like, if you have a vision and you're not doing anything to turn it into a reality, then what is the point? So you can start by just doing exercises that are going to be daily reminders that you have expectations of your life and that you're going places. And we're going to get to the plan part. We went to the vision and now this is the planning part. And this is going to take the majority of this presentation of this, you know, workshop. And it's based on my bestseller, Love the Job You Hate. And it's the five fastest steps to turn your lunch break into your most profitable hour of the day. And the reason why I wrote this book is because I was at a job that I, I thought I hated, but I didn't hate the job. I just hated you know, that I wasn't doing what it was I wanted to do. And you can't blame that on a job. A lot of us want to because it's easy to blame it on a job, but I discovered that you can't blame it on a job. So what I did was just turn my lunch break into something more meaningful. And I just sacrificed, you know, my, my lunch break instead of, you know, I'm hanging out with, with friends and, you know, colleagues and things of that nature. I just changed the way I did my lunch break. And it was just, the transformation was just so amazing. And I thought I'd write a book about it and just share it with the world. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to share a good majority of it with you. And let's just start with your time. The percentages on this chart, it represents a 24-hour period. And look at a big chunk of it, eight hours. You spent eight hours working. That's in the blue, this big area here in the blue. Seven hours sleeping. And a lot of us, we wish we can get seven hours of sleep, you know, sometimes it could be between like maybe four to six, but that's, you know, seven hours is really a stretch. It's, I know it's a stretch for me. I wish I could get seven hours of sleep. It just, I guess my body just doesn't want seven hours of sleep. But look at the four hours, only four hours for family and other life, you know, the things that you want to do in life. Two hours, cussing your way through traffic, you know, two hours on other meals, bathing and getting dressed and you have that one hour for lunch and that's only 4% of the day. And you can transform your life in that 4% of the day because that is your time. Nobody can tell you what to do with that time. You know, when you get off work, you may have obligations with your family and things of that nature. When you're at work, of course, you're obligated to 
do what you're, you know, you were hired to do. But that one hour, make it your time. And a lot of times we like to think that we want to get away, you know, from the job and hang out with the colleagues and, you know, talk about this and talk about that. And if you're, if you're spending that lunch hour talking about, you know, your boss and talking about the company, it's unhealthy. It's very unhealthy. So we need to change the way we see our lunch break. And if you sacrifice your lunch break, let's say for, for a year, that's not asking a lot. For one year, you'll see that, that uh, transformation. Because right now, I am not where I want to be, like uh, as far as the business-wise, but guess what? I am to a point financially where I only have to work to exchange time, my time for money, only have to work part-time. And I don't even have like a lunch break at a job anymore. My lunch break is at home. I don't even have to leave my house until after lunch and only work four hours and come back home. So just the way I changed my lunch break, it allowed me to get to a point where financially I'm only working part time. And guess where I'm going to be, you know, probably a year or so from now is just working for myself full time. And a lot of people think that when you come to these you know, seminars, webinars, or, you know, uh, these type of uh, Zoom meetings and things of that nature, you hear people saying, oh, let's, um, you know, make you a millionaire in six months. Come on now. It could happen. You have to know a lot of people and you have to know a lot of things. I say it is doable because some people have done it, but you have to take a realistic approach at what it is that you're looking for in life. And if somebody is just coming at you saying, oh, you can be a millionaire in six months, you know, if, if they're lying to get your attention, guess how much lying they're going to have to do to keep it. And that's unhealthy for you. So when we set goals, we like to set realistic goals, but that is what your day looks like. And look at that one hour that you have to yourself. That one hour. Wow. So when your lunch break comes around, let's plan on doing the following. Take three to five minutes to refresh. This means to you know, remove all of those work issues from your, your focus and focus 100% on yourself. And you can start by doing the 579 breathing exercises, doing it three times, and then break out your lunch and be sure to drink only water. And I say only water, not to drink only water all the time, but to drink only water during your lunch break because we know that we need that source of, of energy that water source. And it's like, okay, save the coffee for maybe breakfast, dinner, or whatever. Save the alcohol for dinner or whatever. But for lunch, get in the habit of only drinking water. Because the more you start just working on those healthy habits, the better off you are. Because we're not just, like I said, I'm not only here to, you know, talk about financial gains, but it's also to, for our bodies and for our minds and our souls. That's what we want to improve everything. And then take like about 20 to 25 minutes to eat your lunch. But at the same time, think about the day's challenge that you want to do. You know, it's like maybe you, I love lists. I just, I live by lists. I love them because sometimes I don't get them done in the time that I give myself to do them. But guess what? It's still on that list and I'm still just going through, checking things off. And the more things that get checked off, of course, the closer you are going to get to your goal. So just, you know, sit there while you're eating, think about the day's goal. You know, who do you need to call? You know, what, um, what education, you know, do you need for the lifestyle that you want? And then just take the last 30 minutes to complete that challenge. But you want to make sure it's well done. So it doesn't have to be done in one lunch break. Like I said, imagine what your life would look like, you know, like one year from now. That's what you have to imagine. This is not like an overnight success. I would never preach overnight success because I, I, I can't. <laughs> and so we're going to uh, go through the plan because, you know, we're, we're at a great place in history to explore all of this. And it's because of COVID. I think COVID has kind of like... Um, it, it happened for a reason. It, it, was, it, it was almost as if COVID needed to happen because we were getting into this type of lifestyle where it's like, okay, go to high, graduate high school, go to college, get a job, work nine to five, you know, retire. And then everybody's just so unhappy and that's not healthy. But we are at a paradigm shift in, in the whole world, in this universe. Because remember, if you, you know, like history taught us, 
we started off as far as making money, started off farming. You know, it was it was all about farming. And then we went to factories. Then we went to corporate America. There was always a paradigm shift. And now we are in a paradigm shift where being an entrepreneur, I mean, we're at a great place in history to do that because of technology, it makes it so much easier for us. You know, I am a, a published author, a best-selling author, and I publish like my own books. Once upon a time, you had to receive like 3,000 rejection letters, you know, from publishers saying, nope, we don't want you. And now we got those publishers coming to us saying, hey, get with us, because they see what we can do when we set our minds to it and do it ourselves. So the five steps are, you know, taking your power back, removing the clutter, the lunch break customer rite of passage, mastering your message and administrative needs, and launching. And there are, uh, you know, a couple of these I'm not going to spend a lot of time on, and I, but I'll, I'll show you where to get those resources from, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time on them. So let's just go ahead and start with um, taking your power back. You know, what, what is it that keeps you up at night? In order for you to grow, you have to know what it is that's, that's bothering you. What it is that you want to do? So what is it that keeps you up at night? And sometimes, unfortunately, it can be the person that's asleep right next to you. And that, that's unfortunate, but I mean, it happens. So what is it that's keeping you up at night? And how do you fix that? Know these things before you try to move forward because you get stuck. A lot of times we just get stuck and we don't know why we're stuck. It's like, well, if you're not sleeping well, number one is that's unhealthy for your body because your body needs to relax. And it's just, it's frustrating because you know, there's something on your mind that is not being handled. And also you can take your power back by celebrating what you already have accomplished. There are some people, you know, the graduating high school can be like just such a great accomplishment, depending on, you know, like how you were brought up. We take it for granted that it's like, oh yeah, we graduated high school. A lot of us are veterans, you know, sometimes, you know, you graduate high school, you go to, you know, the military, but celebrate what you have already accomplished. And if you're the veterans that are on, on here right now, Celebrate the fact that, you know, that you are a veteran because there, oh my goodness, there are so many things that I have taken advantage of being a veteran. I got like a long list of that. And I, I mean, it's bringing me and like money, 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 you know, it, it, that's a long list. But being a veteran, that is a great accomplishment because the government owes us. A lot of times people don't know what they need to be asking them for, but I, I know I've learned. I've learned. And I just, you know, I... I hang with people who know, who can teach me and guide me. So, and that's what the tribe is all about, but we'll get to that. But celebrate what you already have and know where your money goes. You got to know where your money goes. If you don't have a budget, do one tonight and follow it. I, I am so strict with my budget. And sometimes it is frustrating because it, I can have like a, a, a period, you know, a, a pay period or whatever. I'm looking at my budget. I'm like, oh my goodness, all of my bills are paid and I only have like, you know, just a little left over. But guess what? I don't have to worry about my lights getting cut off. I don't have to worry about, you know, not having gas in my car. I don't have to worry about not having food on my table. So, but that budget, it shows me that it's like, oh, I'm not just in survival mode, but it's like I'm thriving because there is some money that you, I have to sit to the side because that's my seed money. So I have to sit it to the side and say, oh, you know, I can go out tonight or whatever and have like a great dinner. But no, my budget won't allow me because that money is going towards, say like, you know, my, um, my website or hiring someone to edit my books or things of that nature. So you have your seed money and you have to know where it comes from, you know, and how much that you have every month to spend on that. Of course, I set some aside, you know, for, um, you know, things like I love to hike. So I set money aside for the fun stuff. But it's like, you have to know where your money goes and know if you're putting money on you instead of always, you know, just trying to look the part by putting it on you instead of in you. And what that looks like is, um, I, I'm not really like the, the girly girl about the fashion and all that. It's like, I can care less about that. It's like, I just like shoes that are comfortable and that fit and that I can afford. 
So I don't, I, I'm, I think I'm fortunate that I don't have to worry about that. But even if you are that person that likes to, you know, the, the be high fashion and all of that, but it's like, you know, but where is that money coming from? Is it coming out of the seed money that you should be using, you know, instead of trying to look the part right now and not being able to really afford it, you can just make that sacrifice, go to, you know, somewhere instead of Saks or, you know, go to JCPenney and get your shoes. And can you imagine what a difference that would make? in a year if you did that because by the time you build you start building your entrepreneurship endeavors you're going to have that money to get the things that you really want and a lot of people i i talk to people about this all the time purchasing insurance for your cell phone but you know you don't have any on your life and we are all the veterans we all know that you know we can get like a uh, cheaper um, life insurance through the the va so I hope everyone is taking advantage of that. But if you have insurance on your cell phone, that's probably about, I think mine is maybe like $7 a month. That's about the same amount of money you can get life insurance for. So you always want to be covered. You know, be safe and, and look out for your family, the people that you may leave behind, because you never know when your, your time is up. And I am such a huge fan of Prince. I mean, oh, growing up, that was my idol. I mean, I just... I just loved Prince. I think his later years, I really wasn't digging the music, but I love his style. I loved, you know, who he was and what he was about. But guess what? When I found out that Prince died without a will, I lost a lot of respect for him. I really did. Because he got, you know, now he's got people scrambling to figure out that multi-million dollar estate when he could have just had a will. And sometimes we think that, we can't think that we're gonna live forever. And I think he was in his maybe mid fifties when he passed away. I think after 50, it's like, <laughs> we're on the other side. So it's like, you know, think about what, who you're gonna be leaving behind and what you're gonna be leaving behind. And, you know, a lot of people, they review their tax return as free money that you deserve to treat yourself to something fun. But guess what? Take that tax return and put it, use it as your seed money to do the things that you wanna do. In other words, not realizing the difference between spending and investing. And we want to do more investing than we do spending. And we're gonna move on to removing the clutter. This is uh, removing the clutter from your head. You know, what's going on inside your head? You know, it's, it's like the things that keep you up at night. So what's going on inside your head, in your mind? It's like, you're just so frustrated because you see people doing what you wanna do and they make it look so easy. And sometimes they make it seem like it was an easy process to get to where they're at, but trust me, it's not, it's not. And removing the clutter from your head, you know, don't always look at people who are like 30 steps ahead of you. You know, I have some people that I just idolize and I cannot go by where they're at right now. Say like the, the Lisa Nichols of this world, I cannot, you know, look at Lisa Nichols and say, I should be there. It's like, no, she moved at her own pace. It took her, you know, decades to get to where she's at. And sometimes it can take that long, but it's all about, you know, just keep going and getting higher and higher every year, every day, you know, something is growing inside of you. So remove that clutter from your head and stop thinking that, you know, you have to rush it and be like some type of overnight success and trying to keep up with someone who you, you just know you can't keep up with. And removing the clutter from your job, that's of course, you know, that's obvious. And it's not just about having a messy desk or a messy desktop, you know, having a lot of stuff on your desktop that you don't need, but removing the clutter from your job, it's like you have like toxic uh, colleagues, you know? And here's a, um, something that I need you to know, please, I know we get excited about, you know, wanting to change our life and go in different directions, but please do not tell everybody what your plans are, especially your colleagues, because someone who is at a job, who's, you know, sitting right next to you, they may be just fine with where they're at. And if they learn that, oh, you just want to go places and you're doing this and you're doing that, sometimes on a conscious level or on an unconscious level, but they're trying to throw a wrench in it. You know, all of a sudden, you're not that person they want to, you know, hang out with. All of a sudden, they're telling your boss, you know, oh, she said, uh, uh, you know, this and that. So know who, like, your real supporters are and remove that clutter from your job. Sometimes you don't need all of that, you know, stuff on your desk. People, you know, they, they have, like, all of these things that are a reminder 
of where they want to be, and that's fine. But don't use those things to like live vicariously through other people. You know, make it about, make it your space and make it comfortable and, and remove all that clutter because your mind just really, it doesn't function as well, you know, when there's just so much clutter around you. And remove the clutter from your home. And, you know, I belong to like a literary tribe where, <laughs> you know, I do like my writing and all that. They probably look at that picture and, you know, I'm probably ready to pass out. But um, no, I'm not saying get rid of the books. I'm not saying get rid of all the books in your house. No, this is a representation of, you know, if you have like, if you like reading, why not have, you know, something that one of those devices that you can read on, why not have a Kindle, you know, remove that clutter, clean out those drawers, you know, make space available, make, if you live with a lot of people, put, just create a space of your own where you can go to, that's maybe surrounded with your vision board and things of that nature, your daily confirmations, but make it your own space, but remove that clutter from your home. Because when you just start to, like I said, it just, it, it blocks your brain. It just blocks you from like really functioning as well as you can be. And, you know, you gotta love the job you hate. Because you know what, like I said before, it is not your job's responsibility to make you happy. Happiness is something that comes within. It comes from within. So love the job you hate. By knowing that when your lunch break comes around, oh my God, you're going to be working on something that's so fantastic that's going to be taking you to the next level. So love the job you hate because that job is paying for your bills. That job is paying for you, you know, to take vacations. That job is paying for you to drive that car. It's paying for you to have a roof over your head. So when we start to appreciate the things that we do have, you know, we're not so quick to just say, oh, I hate this job. It's like, no, no, you know, the universe is always responding to what we are putting out to the universe. And if we're putting out to the universe, oh, I hate this, I hate that, guess what? That's all you're gonna know, that's all you're gonna feel. So love that job you hate and recognize what you bring to the table. You know, if there's like a new way that you can do things at work, bring it to your boss's attention. You know, recognize that you bring something to the table. So when that, they start talking about laying off folks, you're not on that list. But you always want to recognize that you are there because you bring something to that job. And if you're feeling, you know, underserved, find a way to do something different, to have them serve you better. And that's by being just more, you know, just uh, more of a, I'm not exactly sure what word I'm looking for. But you don't want them to look at you and think of you as someone that they don't need. Because that makes you feel uncomfortable. You're going to feel underserved. So learn how to serve them the way that you promised you would during that job interview and recognize what you bring to the table and start doing it. You know, there's going to be plenty of time for you to do that as well as create the lifestyle and the entrepreneurship, you know, goals that you want to achieve. And the art and rewards of sacrifice. That's a big one. What are you willing to sacrifice? You know, do you know how to tell some people that you've outgrown, that you've outgrown them and, you know, you need to go your separate ways? There's nothing wrong with that. And, you know, I've had people tell me that. And it's like, you can't, I mean, it, it, it hurts, but guess what? It was necessary just because they were the first ones to say it. It, it hurt me more and it made me feel like, you know, less than how I wanted to feel. But I was able to get through it. And by doing so, I knew that I was able to allow people to remove people from my life as well. So what is it that you need to sacrifice? Do you need to sacrifice those Friday nights, you know, going uh, bowling or going out drinking or, you know, your movie nights? Can you imagine how much money you can save when you skip the um, Starbucks, you know, when you skip, you know, the girls' night out all the time, when you skip? going to the club, that is, that's a sacrifice. And you have to get used to sacrificing some things in order to build the lifestyle that you want to build. So what is it that you are willing to sacrifice? You know, relationships, time, money. And we're going to get to mastering your administrative needs and your message. 
And you know what mastering your message is really all about? It's mainly about like that, that 30 second elevator pitch. And when you set a goal for yourself, you have to know what it is precisely. So when you get on like an elevator, say you never know who's gonna be on an elevator with you. Let's say Oprah's on an elevator with you. And she says, oh, what do you do? And you have like 30 seconds before you guys get to the 50th floor. So do you have, you have to write, remember, and just, you know, have that 30 second elevator pitch. And I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll give you mine right now. And you can time me. Like say if I, I met a person, it's like, oh, my name is Bridget Renee. I love dipping my toes into fiction and giving my readers something scandalous to talk about. But the real passion is nonfiction because that's where I inspire the underserved, underpaid, underemployed, and definitely the misunderstood into turning your story into a profitable business or social platform. So you can go to my website at bridgerenee.com for either a free download or even enroll in in my free online course on taking your power back. You can also connect with me on Facebook or Instagram, 30 seconds. So say that, you know, I say that every day, every opportunity that I get, you know, when you're in a car or whatever, until it's something that, you know, not only do I believe it, but, you know, memorize it, write it down, but master your message. Know what it is that you want to do. Who is it that you want to help? I love helping veterans. That's like my, my number one, <laughs> that's my heart, veterans. I love veterans. But I just love the underdog as well. And that person who is just so sad, you know, <laughs> in their workspace, they're just so sad. Mastering your administrative needs, it can mean a lot of things. But for me, what it means is have all of your stuff in order. And if you want to do a business, have a real business and not a bootleg business. You know, a lot of people, they'll create like their own logo and stuff and they'll start using the logo. But sometimes, you know what, if that logo, if it's not trademark, somebody else can use your logo and you tell them to stop using it. It's like, what, is it trademark? You're like, no, it's like, well, yeah, I can use it. But master your administrative need by becoming a real business. Get the business license that you need for your business. You know, even the certifications, get that IEN from the, you know, the employment identification number. Get like the SAMS number um, and, you know, all of those things that you need to be a real business. You know, register with your secretary of state, register your company, your corporation or whatever, but have a real business. That way, when opportunities come, because there are some people you can be doing business with, say like a, a Fortune 500, guess what? They're going to want that. Is it the W-9? And it's like, if you don't have one, you know, ready for them, they're not going to consider you. They're not going to take you seriously. So in order to be taken seriously, you don't want to be running a bootleg business. And it takes some time to get all of those things in order. And trust me, I know. But master your administrative needs. Become a real business because you're going to start thinking of yourself as a real business. And you're going to start thinking of, you know, it's like, okay, a business is designed. You're not a nonprofit, but if you're a for-profit, a business is designed to what? Make money. So your mindset is going to be, you know, about making money because you're a real business and that's what real businesses do. But when you're like a bootleg business, you're like, oh, I can put that off until, you know, this and that, you know, it's like, it doesn't matter. I'm not a real business. It is, it's all about the mindset. So become a real business and then just launch. And you know what? I don't have really anything about the launch. I get further into that. I'm going to tell you about um, the online course, but when you launch, uh, it's like about a specific timing with regards to launching. That's the most important thing is what is your timing? You know, if you have like a certain product as maybe best for a summer, winter, you know, maybe it can be about the seasons of the year. Maybe it's about, you know, like a holiday or type of thing, but you have to be, you have to pay attention to when you're going to launch and you have to know that sometimes a year in advance. So know when it is that you want to launch and just go out there and do it. And don't make your launch be about, oh, I'm going to ask my family and friends to purchase this because that's going to be, you're going to just disillusion yourself because once the family and friends, you know, make the purchase, it's like, you're going to have to go out there to the real world and get them to purchase it for you. So don't just focus on family and friends. When you launch, you want to launch to the world. Let the world know that you're here. 
Because the family and friends are going to be like, oh, that's nice and everything, you know, pat you on the back and make you feel good. But you want those real sales and those real numbers and those real reviews. You want to be realistic with everything that's going on with you because you want to make changes based on those reviews, you know, based on those numbers. So when you launch, know what it is that, you know, the numbers and your expectations that you're looking for. Well, I guess I did have more to say about launching. <laughs> but okay, let's move on to try. Why you need to try? Because you never want to go it alone. You need people. You need people. Sometimes we're like, we're so nervous and we're doing this little thing on a side, you know, and it's like, oh, then you think one day, you know, you're going to launch and okay, everybody's going to know my name. Everybody's pay me. No, no, no. You need people. You need clients. You need prayer warriors, accountability buddies. And that's a big one right there, accountability buddies, because they keep you on track. You need people singing your praises, but you need people. So that's why you need to try. Never, never try to go it alone. And clients, yeah, clients are a part of your tribe because there are certain aspects of growing that, you know, you need to outsource. Like say like with my writing tribe, guess what? I don't do book covers. But there is someone in my tribe that does like award-winning book covers. And I don't need to go outside the tribe to make everything that I happen within the writing process, within becoming a published author process. I don't have to go outside the tribe to make that happen. As far as editing, you know, there's someone in my tribe who is editing books. You have like the back matter of books. All of that stuff is in one tribe that I roll with, just one tribe. And we hold ourselves accountable. You know, I'm responsible for like doing accountability posts every morning. It's like, okay, everybody, what are you doing? What are your author goals for the day? And you need that. You do not want to try to go it alone. And you want to give people the best that you have to give to them. You don't want to slack, you know, and just say, oh, you know, I can just throw this together. No, you want people, accountability buddies that's going to say like, you know, someone, who looked at this presentation before, you know, I put it out there, gave me feedback, things of that nature. But you want to give people the best that you have to offer and don't you cheat yourself or cheat other people. And that's what a tribe is all about. So you absolutely positively, you need all of these things, a vision, a plan, and a tribe. So let's talk about your next move. And what I would like for you to do I have a free online course and it's loaded with actionable steps. And not only that, but it has a workbook. And see, that's the thing. If you guys say like, if you had a workbook right now, well, number one, you wouldn't be able to keep up, you know, with me with the workbook, but that workbook allows you to think about things, you know, what is it that you want to do? It gives you an opportunity to change your mind, to have it written down. When you have things that are like written down in front of you, like I talked about lists earlier, those lists, I mean, they really get me through the day because sometimes I wake up and I, I can't function unless I know, you know, like three top things I want to get done that day. You know, it's like, oh, do I need to go run errands? Do I need to, you know, go uh, to the county and get some license or something? Do I need to meet with somebody? But those lists save me. But when you have like a workbook in front of you, you know, you can always refer to that. So I have a free online course. It's called Taking Your Power Back. And it is a lot of what we talked about now, but I really go into you know, more depth about everything that we talked about today. And the thing is, once you're in the course, you can go back and forth, go in and out of, in and out of it. And it's like, it's, it's just to where, say if you only wanted to talk about, you know, always keep you up at night, you can go directly to that spot and then work on those exercises. There are you know, a lot of exercises that's just gonna really make you think about what it is that you want in life. So you can go to my website, it's www.bridgerene.com and just um, you know, enroll in that free course. And I, I would love to see you in there because there's just so much, you know, I, I have so much more information for you, of course, um, you know, the, our time is, is almost up. 
and that went by like really, really fast. But I tell you, I get so excited when I'm talking about business and when I'm talking about helping people, I get so excited because this is what I was meant to do. This is who I was meant to be. And so I can just talk about business for hours and hours. And especially like with my accountability buddies, we just, we start talking and then we start, you know, getting new ideas and start just really feeding off of each other. And so that's why it's important to, to have that tribe. You know, I, I'm hoping that you can be a part of my tribe, you know, along with the, with the course and all. So let's do this together. There's a lot that you want to do. And I always close by asking two life-changing questions. You know, what would your life look like one year from now if you don't do, you don't do anything different? It's not going to look any different. You know, if anything, you'd probably be going backwards if you're not doing anything you know, to change your life, but what could your life look like one year from now if you follow through on your vision? And one year from now, we're talking about 365 days. Imagine if you did one thing a day. That's getting 365 things done in one year. Imagine how far you can be if you did that. And I'll tell you, it just, it works. It really does, it works, but it is not overnight. And you do need people. You need to come out of that comfort zone. You need to do things. Well, you have to get uncomfortable. You have to get uncomfortable. So, and this is going to sound strange, but you have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable by doing things that make you uncomfortable. Because I'm actually, believe it or not, I'm an introvert. Like when I get off this presentation, guess what? I'll probably go back you know, to my room and just chill by myself because I'm not that person that needs that type of outside stimulant in order for me to like really function. I'm, I'm an introvert, but when it comes to talking business, when it comes to talking things I know, I don't have a problem. I'm no longer nervous because it's what I know, it's what I believe in, it's what I wanna see for you. So I know, you know, people don't believe me when I say I'm an introvert, but I really am. <laughs> so anyway, that is, my presentation and I want to thank you so so much for being here and uh, Melissa if there are any questions that you would like to ask I guess now is the time and thank you so much for allowing me this time and Bridget you thought it was only going to be 25 minutes <laughs> I know I know right I know like I said it's like once I start talking and then I you know it's just it, it's a part of who I am now and I, and I just love it. It's like, I can just literally just sit there and talk about business all day. No, that's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> loving it. And, and everybody, every, everyone in the chat too is, is loving it as well. So some great feedback and um, loving your message and advice, Bridget. Thank you. I'm sitting here at work and I'm absolutely empowered. Hashtag hustle. Uh, oh, and Peggy mentions in Nevada, the state attorney general off, does offer um, free wills for vets. So we got those resources. Um, oh, Texas qualifying new veteran owned businesses is not subject to franchise tax for the initial five year period for those in Texas. Uh, Donna, great advice, Bridget. You are sharing a tremendous amount of useful information, inspiring thoughts. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Bridget. Very empowering. Thank you so much. Great job, Bridget. Thanks so much for sharing these ideas. Thank you, Bridget. Thank you. I'm starting my own LLC and this was very helpful. Thanks, Bridget. Yes. Thank you so much, Bridget. This was awesome. Oh, you awesome. are so welcome. You're so welcome. It just warms my heart to kind of have, you know, that impact. And, you know, and I'm basically at the start of things. So imagine how much impact that we can have when we just keep moving forward and keep moving forward. Love it, love it. Absolutely, and I hope everybody takes it takes advantage of your your free online course. Um, definitely do that, everyone. And and again, this will be recorded, and we'll get the link out once we have it uploaded to YouTube. And Bridget, uh, greatly appreciate your time and, and sharing sharing your knowledge with everyone. And and I love the the lunch break hustler. Love it. Love it. <laughs> But. You are so welcome. Thank you so much. All right. for your Thank time. you, everyone. Bye. Bye.